Hi, I'm Tiffany, and I'm the first speaker supporting the negative side. Uh, supporting the idea that restricting people's freedom of movement is not humane. Imagine yourself as a refugee. Imagine traveling for days, weeks, months to get to a place, a haven of more opportunities, a better life. Imagine getting to said haven. But instead of that better life, finding that better life that you so desperately need, you get put into a camp, a camp with thousands of other people just like you, hoping for new opportunities, running from terrorists, running from a war zone that they once called home, running just like you. First of all, on the topic, on the topic of terrorists, here's a quote from an article in Washington Post. Since 9-11, only a small handful of the hundreds of thousands of Middle Eastern refugees admitted to the U.S. have been caught attempting acts of terrorism, and none of them have succeeded. This shows that not only is there very little chance that there would actually be terrorists amongst the refugees, but it also shows that there's a very low chance that they would succeed. Here's a story about a 10-year-old Somali, a Somali refugee named Talima. My parents think there's going to be a war, Halima said when waiting in line to receive vaccination. So one morning, my mother took me, my sister, and my baby brother and left our house. My father stayed behind with two of my brothers and my grandmother. It took us three weeks to walk here. My mom carried some food and we also begged in the villages we passed. We got here two days ago. We have to wait for about a week for our papers to be checked. Then a truck is coming to take us to our, home, our, to our new home is on UNRefugees.org. Halima and her family are now living with some 280,000 Somalis in three massive refugee camps in the Daadaab region of eastern Kenya. With little prospect of peace in Somalia, they are likely to remain in the camps for years to come. Years, not weeks. Is that humane, do you think, to have a 10-year-old girl wait, hopefully, for something that might never even come? She, her mother, and her baby brother used to have a somewhat comfortable life in Somalia. Um, Halima's dad had a job. Her family all lived together, and they were happy with that. Now they have not only lost all of that, but they have lost their liberty to move to other countries. According to the UNHCR, there are around 59.5 million people in the world right now suffering as refugees. They're not the majority, but they are also still the same as us, humans, and we should treat them as such. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, the greatness of, hu of humanity is not in being human, but in being humane. So who should the government, who should we try to help more? The ones who have almost everything, or the ones who have lost almost everything? Think about it. What's more for the greater good? More humane. Thank you.